drunkard? Because the wicked priest actually drinks his fill of the cup of the wrath of God for what he did to the righteous teacher. He's not drinking alcohol. He's drinking divine vengeance. And these people who think the wicked priest is a drunk, you'll read that in many scroll books, cannot relate to literary metaphor. It's in the Revelation book, as I told you. It's there in two places. Uh, I can think I mentioned it once, but I should read it to you again. It's uh, further on in Revelation. I think it's around chapter 14 of Revelation. The same imagery is there. And it says, And a second angel, line 14a, followed him, calling, Babylon is fallen, Babylon the great is fallen. We know in Revelation, Babylon is supposed to be Rome. Babylon, which gave the whole world the wine of God's anger to drink. That is the imagery of the death of the righteous, of, of the wicked priest in the scrolls. And a third angel followed and shouted, All those who worship the beast and his statue and have themselves branded on the head of the Lord will be made to drink the wine of God's fury, which is ready undiluted in the cup of his anger and fire and brimstone, etc. That's exactly the, uh, that's exactly the imagery of the Habakkuk pressure on the death of the righteous teacher. Um, if I didn't read it to you, I can read it to you quickly again. I just got to find the right uh, translation here. But I bring all these books in case I need them. But here it is. It's in column 10 or 11. Talking about building a city on blood and this sort of thing. And the blood of man. Interpretation, column 12. Of this passage, concern, passage concerns the wicked priest. He will be paid the reward he paid the poor, the Ibanim. <coughs> and oh, it's in the previous column, column 11. Habakkuk is talking about woe to the one who causes his neighbor to drink, pouring out his fury into his drunkenness. Its interpretation concerns the wicked priest who pursued the righteous teacher in order to swallow him in his hot anger. That is the wicked priest's hot anger. And on the Day of Atonement, he appeared to him to swallow him, meaning to kill him. And then it goes on to have, you were satiated with shame, than, with shame, more with shame than glory, drink and stagger. For the cup of the right hand of the Lord will come around to you, and shame will cover your glory. This concerns the wicked priest, whose shame was greater than his glory, etc., etc., etc. And he walked in the way of satiety, of drinking his fill. That's what they say of drunkenness. But the cup of the wrath of God will swallow him. That is, he will drink his fill of the cup of the wrath of God. <coughs> Walk in the way of drinking his fill of the cup of the wrath of God. And he did this for, because of what he did to the righteous teacher and what he did to the poor, the followers of the righteous teacher. And, you know, the followers of James and early Christianity are called Ebionites. Here in this document, the poor are the Ebionites. I mean, this says almost on its very face that this is an Ebionite doc document. The reason that the followers of James and early Christianity are called the Ebionites is because they were called the poor. And the followers of the righteous teacher here in the Habakkuk Pesher are called the poor. Anyway, we won't go ahead like that. I just want to show you that um, Simon was drunk at a bank, or was having a bank, let me say he was drunk. He was attacked at a bank and banquet and killed. So they say, oh, he was a drunkard. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's about as sophisticated as you get at Harvard and Oxford and places like that. Uh, so I, I don't want you to think you're missing anything by being a Cal State Long Beach firm. Anyway, um, so John was very successful, hired Connus. He had 33 years of administration. He died leaving uh, five sons. Blessed if ever man there was, and he had the three greatest privileges at once, political power, high priesthood, and prophetic gift. So he had been appointed high priest at one point in the, uh, in the uh, Maccabee books, I think, uh, or he was appointed king uh, by the Seleucids, and he also had the high priesthood. So, and prophecy supposedly predicted the fate of his sons. Uh, that's, that's fleshed out more in the antiquities. He, he says here that Aristobulus, his oldest son, was the first to wear the crown. But 
we have in the Maccabee books that the Jonathan had the crown before him, so I don't know which is right here. Uh, Aristobulus, as we see here, is the oldest son of uh, John Hyrcanus, but he doesn't last long. He falls out with his uh, younger brother, the two squabble, I forget what happens to them, but they both die in the process. In any case, uh, uh, along the way here, an Essene is mentioned. This is around 100 BC. The incident had another surprising feature. Judas, an Essene born and bred, was never mistaken in any of his predictions. On this occasion, when he saw Antigonus pass through the temple, he called out to his acquaintance, pupils that were with him, Oh God, the best thing is that I should die. Uh, there lies Antigonus, who has to have been killed today. In any case, Antigonus is the next oldest son of John Hyrcanus. These two older sons die in some way, I forget how. But he mentions Judas the Essene, it's the first we have of any Essene mentioned. This is around 100 B.C. But I don't think this is an Essene. The same way that Pharisee Hasidans are confused with Zadokite Hasidans, I think this is a Pharisee. An Essene, the word Essene, I think comes from the, from the word uh, Hasidan, originally. Probably originally, no one knows what Essene comes from. People think it has to do with piousness in Aramaic. It isn't clear. Some Christian scholars say it comes from Jesus, a Jezaean or from Jesse, Jesus' ancestor, Jesenes. That's what some of the early church fathers say. Nobody knows what the word Essene comes from. But it's mentioned for the first time. But what is he? He's just a, a fortune-telling sort of sycophant hanging around the temple. Well, as we'll find, these fortune-telling people like Josephus himself later on, who predicts Vespasian's rise to power, these sycophants are mostly Pharisees. So I don't think this is a real pure Essene here, though he is mentioned as an Essene. The key is that Alexander's widow is mentioned here. Uh, pardon me. Um, Alexander's wife is mentioned here. Um, her name is um, Salome Alexander. She's mentioned in the scrolls at one point. But it's in a, 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 another document that's just very... Um, Fragmentary. And uh, it also mentions the conqueror of the uh, temple in 63 BC and uh, just very fragmentary. And again, it looks like past events are being mentioned. But it's clear that 